Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why! Well, no plants in my hands, but that's because they're in an aquarium. So, today's about house plants. I gave myself several projects, and I'm going to have a step-by-step -step tutorial on what to do with these plants. But first, let's talk about this. Where the heck was I on November 12th? Well, I was a bit ambitious uh, with the alocasia, Polly, and I even had a subscriber, Stony Scapes, right here. Tell me no way. Not going to happen. And yeah, uh, he's right. Because on the 12th, I was looking at dead alocasia, and I was extremely uh, confident in alocasia because of where they grow. Uh, they are a bog plant, so just like Sagittaria, they do. They are a tuber plant also. Uh, tuber plants are an example of that. Uh, would be uh, potatoes. Um, but anyway, they they are exactly like Sagittaria, and I'm from the same environment. And I I didn't have success with it, and I wanted to have success with something. So uh, two weeks before the alocasia, I had done two other plants that I was completely not. Uh, confident with at all and and well one of the three is doing great and we're gonna talk about it and I'm going to show you and explain how I didn't actually fail with the alocasia I mean yeah I'm about to show you dead plants but I have success with others and then we'll talk about why why one of them died so we're just gonna go look at the tank and we'll talk about all the plants and but we're doing birds nests Ferns, we're doing crotons, which crotons all over the internet said, nope, not going to happen, no way. And then, of course, alocasia poly, all right? It, and it's a type of elephant ear. So, anyway, uh, let's let's move on. And uh, here's the three introductions for the hours of videos I, ha I was going to do that you can watch now while I'm walking to my tank. <laughs> I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. All right. Yeah, I'm on a rant and having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. All right. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking about plants, that's why. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so here we are to the projects. And, and hear me out, hear me out, hear me out on this. Yes, the fish can go in and they can come and go as they please is what I'm getting at. I don't know. Call it what you want. A fish elevator, a lookout tower for the fish, you know, whatever. I think it's cool. Uh, so, uh, now that we're past the little fun, pro see, I always have weird things going on. Uh, so, obviously, that is the bird's nest uh, fern. So, it has been well over a month. Uh, this is a croton. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's once where, where the alocasia poly is. So, actually, let's talk about that first. Why, why did it die? Did I, did I do something wrong? No, I didn't. And I made a video about beginner-friendly plants, uh, the truth about them, and a way to go about finding what plants will work for you. Okay, now, all three of these plants, besides the alocasia, were said that Putting them in an aquarium just isn't going to work out. The reason the alocasia didn't make it, uh, it they didn't even make it a full uh, 14 days. Uh, so the reason they didn't make it is because they didn't like these conditions. Although where they come from, they their roots and uh, bulbs and everything, halfway up the stems are submerged in muddy, murky water, and their uh, leaves grow immersed. Well, you know, it didn't like the setup I have. You know, uh, this is a very humid area. The water is kept warm because there's tropical fish in here. Um, but it didn't like the water or it didn't like the light. Something. Um, but now bird's nest fern. Now the reason I'm showing this as a success because what I was waiting on, I've cut a lot of leaves off of this, by the way, that were melting and new ones that came back. Bird's nest ferns grow three of these. This is brand new. When they go three in the center... Uh, it apparently is supposed to look like a bird, bird's nest. Anyway, I don't know. 
But I do know that this type of fern is an epiphyte. And epiphytes are non-parasitic plants that grow on other plants. Specifically, this fern grows on trees. So it is a tropical plant. Its roots being completely submerged all the time. You know, I'm sure it may happen, but they prefer being attached to a tree. Although it's doing okay so far. You know, I mean, this leaf may go. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to say 100% that this plant will be successful in your tank because, hey, you may have success with alocasia. Surprisingly, the plant that has done the best, uh, it, it lost a bunch of leaves, new ones grew back, and you can see a new leaf is coming here. Now, house plants do the same thing that aquatic plants do. They start to melt and leaves, uh, you know, turn soft and soggy like this is melting and it falls off now if the entire plant is not okay with what's going on the stem that holds all the plants will start to become soggy and turn brown as well this one's bright vibrant green this croton now everything I read about crotons said that they are a tropical plant but hate getting their feet wet what that means is they want everything up here wet humid and soggy all the time but not down below um that i will get you'll get root rot well i don't know in this particular situation this croton loves what i got going on uh here and it is doing great the colors are bright vibrant red yellow green new growth is coming in nothing's gone soft and uh the technique i use for these house plants are the same for all of them uh and in the tutorial at the end of this video I'll show you all the stuff that you need what I used and all of that and you know experiment try with whatever plants you want this croton uh, it was suggested that it would die in a week um, you know alocasia it's recommended that you keep it in the bathroom because it likes it uh, so soggy humid and wet um, that that's where people have success with it the most you know birds nests ferns they don't even grow on the ground. They grow at the tops of trees. So, yes, I took my own advice. I did several plants. Uh, and, you know, we'll do a follow-up on this fern. Because I'm still not 100%, although it's not dead. Um, and we'll do a follow-up on this one in a month, too. Although this one's been in here for six weeks. If it was going to... If it was going to just die all the way, it would have happened. But, I don't know. Maybe I'll eat my words. Uh, so... Uh, stick around I will have a you know tutorial the supplies you need we'll do it in a comedic way and have lots of fun uh, and oh any fish in the fishy bubble I don't know all right let's get to the tutorial supplies let's talk about supplies all right so if you watch this video and you are interested in trying the same thing these are the things you're going to need besides the plant obviously uh, if you're going to try a random uh, potted plant, I would uh, suggest sticking to ivies and ferns to begin with. Alright, so supplies besides the plant. You're also going to need some uh, media filter. A mesh bag. Some floral wire. A pair of scissors. Bucket. Some water. Oh, we're in a cauldron! <laughs> Alright, those are supplies. Let's get to the cleanup! Alright, quick insert pro tip on houseplants. Alright, I found out that there is something called a death plug. Psh, looks like that. You can find it on some houseplants. Now, it is known in the houseplant hobby to be the death of all plants. It's a silly little mesh net, and yes, I encountered one, and you are supposed to remove your houseplants, and if you find one of these ridiculous things on there, remove it. It will kill your plant. And if that sounds familiar, perhaps maybe you bought a java fern and uh, opened it up to discover that there's a bunch of black thread wrapped around the rhizome and roots destined to kill your java fern. These unspoken 
rules we're just automatically supposed to know. Cool. Around the bulbs, they have put this fabric that's holding dirt up against the plant. Toothbrush to get in the, you know, nooks and crannies between these roots. Then just simply submerge the pot, rig it up however you want. I'm in the basement, so you know I nailed it to the wall. That's how I'm holding it in place. Same with all this stuff. Wire and nails, but you can do it however you want. All right, so I wanted to have an actual time frame of to when I put the crotons in. Looked at my bank statement. I bought them on September 12th, so they've been in there for about six weeks plus, and are doing awesome. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I really do appreciate it. Although this uh, video is minutes long, that was hours of videos over nearly two months of editing, you know, so you didn't have to see a bunch of uh, Krakamalaka. So I do appreciate it, and if you made it this far, hey, po poke that subscribe button, then, then, then smash that bell. Holla, hey, share to pal, all right. Uh, thanks again. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And like always, if you're down in the dumps, you're having a hard time, get up and do something about it. I'll catch you next time.